Well, howdy y'all, welcome back. Out here at a nice spot. It's a new spot actually uh, that I found today. And the river's over there, we'll take a wander. Uh, but you got some electrical campsites over there. I don't need electricity tonight. It's obviously a little cold and chilly, but we've got a rad spot here. Uh, if you can see, there's a, just a big, uh, there's a big bluff behind me, I guess you would say. I don't know. Uh, but this is overall a decent spot. Um, the Missouri River is right here, and this place was completely wrecked by the flood a few years back. Uh, and the time that I actually found it, it was closed because of that flooding. But I found it today, and luckily it was here, and it was relatively cleared of snow. Because this is the fourth spot I've been to today, and everywhere else it was open. The parks were open, you could camp there, but the snow was so deep that I couldn't get in. Uh, my truck is pretty short. The last one I would have had to shovel two feet of snow in order to back into a campground, which wouldn't have been the greatest experience. Uh, so, found this one, and I'm pretty stoked on it. Yeah, sorry I missed the upload last week, guys, but we got a huge storm here, which would have been great to go camp in, and I almost did, but I'm really glad that I didn't, because there are currently spots right now, as of the day you see this video, that are still snowed close. That if I would have gotten in there, I might have been stuck for like two weeks. Uh, we had some major snow here and major drifting, and it got very, very cold, but uh, they've got a majority of the stuff cleared out, and we're good at this point, but here's the river. Guess we'll walk out here. Geese, I think. What is that? Carp, maybe? Was somebody down here? Those mussels, what is that? Those are all... Oh, those are all filleted bluegill, I think? Yeah. Somebody filleted a bunch of bluegill and threw all the carcasses here. I don't know when they would have fished it. But this gets rolled down in the summer so you can access the water, but... Like a grain elevator and stuff over there. There's a town right here. That's about it on this side. Anywho, over on that end, which I don't know, we're not gonna, we can't even go in there. But down there, there's a bunch of buildings on stilts. And I believe this is an area where they pull water out of the ground for drinking water. I don't know if I'll even be able to zoom in far enough to see them. Can you see those things sticking up over there in the distance? Maybe we'll check them out in the morning. You could, you can't drive over there though, but it looks like a big bunch of pumps, dude. And there's, I don't know, I can probably count at least 10 of them and they're on stilts that are, I don't know, 20 feet tall. But uh, yeah, let's head, uh, head back over to the rig. Well, we've got a couple hours of light left at least. Uh, so I'm going to start a fire because it's been a few weeks since I've had a campfire. Got our old dirty old homemade ones. This looks like it's actually got some wood in it too. Just a few hairs in there. Snakeskin. Huh. Did see that one. I was loading it up. Hopefully, it ain't in there nowhere. Hiding in my twoods.
Well, that should go pretty good. Maybe not right in the smoke, I guess. Well, Ooh. give you guys a little temp check before we get too far into this. Like I said, it's warmed back up. Uh, last week, it was like 20 below, and now it's 35, and I think next week it's supposed to be 55 again. This winter is just kind of ridiculous, but 35, uh, low of 31 tonight, so it's gonna drop just below freezing. I need to get my thermometer out and put the one outside. And then there's a fog advisory this evening, which it's not surprising. It's kind of misting right now as it is. I should probably close my tailgate. Just gonna enjoy this for a while. It really does feel nice out here compared to the last couple of weeks. Tell y'all, it's getting cold out there. Definitely cooled off as the sun went down. Street lights came on. And uh, street lights come on, you know, that means one thing. You gotta get inside, right? Let me give you some more light. Good enough, there we go. Whew. Yeah, it's getting chilly out there. And, uh, as you know from the title of the video, we're going to try something a little different tonight. Um, I have seen this done. I never really watched anything about it, but the reviews are very divided. Some say it works, some say it doesn't work, but I'm going to take this, uh, I believe this is called terracotta. It's a terracotta flower pot. and. Uh, Along with some of this wire, I got a roll of wire and a couple of candles in here. We're going to try to make ourselves a little heater and see what it does. So we've got just a regular old pillar candle there. And the goal, and I know you guys can't see it very well because I'm kind of running out of room over here. There you go. So the goal of this is to take this wire and somehow bend it up and and whatnot and get this thing to sit kind of just like that so we need a you need a gap under here to get some airflow and the flower pot has a big hole in the end of it uh, i suppose i can take the label off of there but we're going to try to wire it up and we'll see if this pot actually holds some of the heat from that flame and uh, warms it up in here at all. Um, I suppose I could take this off, but it's kind of nice because it's cold out there. So I've also, I went and picked up one of these and I've kind of wanted one of these for a while, but I uh, never had one before. It's a, it's a temperature gun. So you just pull the trigger and it'll read the temperature so right here on my wall, it's 37 degrees. So this says it's about 37 degrees in here. 
floor is 37, sides 36, the window's 34. I don't know if it'll actually read the window temperature or if it's reading through it or not. But this will be able to tell us what this temperature is getting up to at least. Um, before we get too far into that, I do have another candle in here. This one's a taller one. Because uh, I wasn't sure if that candle, how long that would burn for. And if it seems safe enough, we'll try to let it burn all night and see what it does. Might need it since I'm dumb and haven't put my curtains up yet to hold any of this heat in. But, uh, oh, we've got our carbon monoxide detector that just scared me. It's going to reset. I believe it's working. Yes. So we've got our carbon monoxide detector. Hopefully we don't die in here tonight, but I've got an indoor outdoor thermometer. So I'll set this one up in here and I'll set this one outside somewhere. I guess up here it should be fine. And uh, we'll get to working on this thing. set that down on my bumper where the license plate is that should be enough of a reading I suppose yeah it's chilly in here well I do have this the cooler to work with I can't leave this on there all night because uh, I wouldn't be able to get in and out of the cooler and I'm going to need to be able to do that. So we're going to take our step here that we usually have outside and we'll use this probably right here I guess if it'll fit. I guess maybe it's bigger than I thought. Hevo. There we go. We're going to try to build it on there. So I shouldn't knock it off of that. You gotta be careful though. I've got a multi-tool here and it's got a cutter on it so we can cut some of that wire. I'm really, really not sure though how I'm gonna get this thing to hold it. We'll just have to figure it out, right? So how are we gonna do this folks? I could figure out how to do it with one piece of wire instead of trying to like tie a bunch of this stuff together. That would be probably beneficial to my own self. Correct? Let's we'll get ourselves a nice long chunk of this and not poke our eye out. Maybe we'll start, start there. Try not to cut it yet. going about as well as I expected it to, to be honest with you. sketchy man maybe that's not gonna be the juice to do it that way all right complete redo we're 
gonna start in the start in here. better I'm gonna add a couple of more supports to that I think but much better still a little wobbly but to be expected honestly I think we're good with that. It's not exactly the, the nicest thing, but we've got a two finger gap here and my candle should, oop, no one dropped that. My candle should fit in there. Good enough, right? Let's just get this thing going. One problem I know I'll probably have, man, this is sketchy. I hope I don't spill wax all over the floor, but one issue is like, I have a feeling this is probably going to get hot enough that I won't be able to pick it up. I don't know. We'll find out, right? somebody driving through you know what do I have any I almost wish I would have put brought like a bowl or something to set this in because I'm gonna get wax all over this thing I guess it doesn't really matter where's my lighter though my lighter and I got one here all right we'll just go ahead and set her on there our best not to kick this over and get wax in the carpet because I'd be pretty bummed at myself if I did that but I mean I can already feel the heat coming out of the top of it maybe it'll work better than I thought um, oh, Hevo. so it says it's uh, 34 degrees outside and 42 degrees inside right now and this hasn't been able to warm up yet so it says this is 46 degrees and the top is already at 70 degrees 45 on the bottom some of them that I've seen they even cover this top hole up but this will allow for actual airflow to get through there I don't know if you guys can see my breath in here right now I mean I can feel it already It's warming up just a little bit. Like I said, I don't know how well this is going to work. I don't have a ton of faith in it actually working, but we'll see what that thermometer and stuff says here in a little while and see if there's any change inside. I really need to get my curtains up. I know I've said that a few times already. Well, it's been a little while. 
I got changed. Like, you can still see my breath in here. Uh, this thermometer says 33 outside, 45 inside. And uh, my trusty old heat gun thing here. It says the top of it is like 320. Can you guys see that? 326 on top. Like it's it's really warm. It's radiating heat. Uh, the side, I mean, you can see where I'm pointing. 127, 70, 56. So it's definitely like you can't create more heat, I don't think, than what the candle's putting off. Like there's only so much energy. I don't know exactly how BTUs and all that stuff works, but like it's putting off, it's radiating heat. I feel like it's putting off more heat than just a regular candle flame would because you're holding that heat in the flower pot. It's absorbing so much of it. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things. I feel like it's better than nothing. And now I'm like, I almost want to try to make this better somehow. Uh, and obviously more candles. I tried to see if this, they, they would probably both fit in there, but this one is much taller. Like that flame is going to be really close to the side of this one. I don't feel like that's probably a smart idea. Suppose I could just cut it in half, but uh, yeah, more candles. Ooh. Beeps when it shuts off. More candles. Definitely needs more candles. So if you had like four smaller candles in this one, because uh, it doesn't need to be that big around, but you know, four smaller ones in there. So then you have four flames heating everything up. And if the candle was shorter, you'd be heating it up farther down because the candle's like, I don't know. candles like over this lip turn it back on so you can hear it beep some more you can just hold it and it'll measure so 55 57 60 65 70 75 85 95 120 160 199 yeah and like reading the floor in here, 41.1, 46. So this is pretty accurate. This says it's 45.5 degrees right there in the corner. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. Three candles, three or four candles. You set up like three or four of these things in here. It's probably overkill, but you could definitely heat up a small space small space for sure and i'd be curious how much warmer it'd be in here right now if i was smart enough to have the windows covered up but anyways let's make some food uh what do we got what do we got i gotta now i got this big thing in my way dang old dang if we don't have anything too terribly difficult to make tonight so the recipe is something that my wife told me about. I guess right now it's big on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, never. I don't have it downloaded. I don't do TikToks. I don't watch TikToks. Dang old kids and their TikToks. Uh, but it is creamy, creamy ramen. Like, a, let me just tell you what the actual name of it is, right? TikTok's famous creamy ramen recipe. Uh, and it's four ingredients and that's it. So it should be pretty simple. Um, we're gonna need all of the things, or at least some of the things. Uh, we brought the cup. Um, eggs and what else i got some garlic minced garlic and oh yeah some fish and some hot sauce 
We'll get to that. Grab it here while we're in here. We'll get to that. All right. All of the things. way more water than I need. But that's okay. Always put your combustible gas right next to your open flame. We'll make ourselves a little bit more heat. boiling over yonder we'll get the rest of this going so the recipe calls for uh, one egg and two tablespoons of mayonnaise uh, and instead of grabbing mayonnaise I did the only appropriate thing was to go to the gas station and get mayonnaise packets for free so we've got some Duke's mayonnaise here it calls for I think two tablespoons in the recipe uh, I don't know how much each one of these is. It doesn't say it on there is the thing. It doesn't give you a, an amount, but I'm guessing each one of these might be a bit tablespoon, so we'll use a couple of those. We'll see what this is all about. And then you're supposed to put some minced garlic in there. We're gonna kinda put this Instead of putting the egg straight into the ramen like some people do, it says to put it in here and put the mayonnaise in and whisk it up. So, that's what we'll do. I brought two eggs just in case because you never know if you're going to break one, but there we go. It's probably boiling already. Yeah, that's probably a tablespoon. We're just going to say it is. It sounds really weird, but we'll find out if it's good. And then we're just going to put a little bit of this minced garlic in there. It said the recipe calls for a fresh garlic clove that you mince yourself or whatever. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're going to take that much garlic. Drop her in there. just looks weird but okay I don't know if this ramen will even fit in there let's see what I'm doing no it does not tight Broken in half in the bag. Right. 
gotta get the little bits. This looks weird to me. We're gonna let that ramen cook up first. Uh, I did also bring some smoked salmon. I've got a little tin of smoked salmon. The homie Travis sent this to me along with the tiniest little bottle of Tabasco sauce if you can see that and on the back it says fishwife on there so it's the same brand as this smoke it's branded like the smoked salmon and he also when he said that he sent a thing of crackers with it so we've got our cup here for a drink but we got a thing of crackers so we'll get to these two I wanted to have some meat with the ramen since there was nothing in it uh, I'm not going to put this in there though Although smoked salmon ramen doesn't sound terrible, uh, but we've got ourselves an old style. Uh, had these before, they're good. It's just Hellman's pure, genuine old style, old world methods. That's all she says on there. I don't know where it's brewed at. Oh, it's out of La Crosse, Wisconsin, Hellman Brewing. Didn't know it was a Wisconsin beer. Kind of makes sense now, though. But basic light beer. Looks like a light beer, anyway. There we go, there we go. <sighs> Cheers, y'all. I don't want to stick that in my thing here. I guess it doesn't really matter, but. All right, so I'm gonna put this lid back on and just, I'm not gonna dump the whole thing of water in there uh, because that might get too soupy. I guess the goal is, you know, creamy and the water is supposed to be hot enough to cook the egg, I guess. So. <laughs> Give her a dangle there. Maybe like so. You know, that kind of smells good. I don't know if that egg is cooking. <laughs> it's steaming. I mean, I don't know. Drain the rest of this out and. Go from there, I guess, right? Here's the test more than anything. Probably still gonna put some of this chicken in there. Well, maybe I wanna taste that first. It looks really good, like, definitely looks like creamy, you know? Maybe I use a little bit too much water. I don't know. I know adding an egg to rear ramen is fairly normal. So this doesn't seem super far off, but the whole mayonnaise thing seems a little odd. Garlic? I mean, who doesn't like a little bit of garlic here and there? 
All right, we'll give it a little taste without any seasoning. I have a feeling I'm still gonna want some seasoning on there. That's different. Like, I don't taste mayonnaise. I can kind of taste the egg in there. A little bit of garlic. Definitely needs seasoning on it. Creamy chicken. I don't think we're going to need any more of that. But So, I don't know how this would taste with other flavors. I feel like chicken... Is probably the best with the whole creaminess of it. I guess you, you know, who knows? Might be good with beef or whatever. And you could add more to this, obviously. Maybe some bacon in there. That wouldn't be bad either. I'm gonna set that on there because it's just gonna get cold. Bit of something. Obviously, the the flavor packet sets it off, but I like that. Like it wasn't too much mayonnaise. Like I don't taste, I don't taste a bunch of mayonnaise, uh, especially once you get the seasoning and stuff in there. Very good. Very, very good. I'll do that. I'm going to do that again for sure. All right, let's pop this guy open. So, packed by hand, 100% traceable, smoked salmon, fishwife, tinned seafood, responsibly raised in Norway. Oh, so this is from Norway. The term fishwife dates back to the 16th century when it was used to describe the wives of fishermen who sold their fishy wares at the market. It later evolved into an insult for loud, foul-mouthed women. Uh, with love, proud fishwives. Eh. That's cool. I want to knock that open. But... This is a plain old can. The box is pretty legit though. How to eat. Delightful recipes here. We got some crackers to go with that. Try to get a paper towel under that so I don't get fish juice on everything, right? While my ramen's getting cold. got some glorious chunks of smoked salmon in there if you guys can see it pretty big hunks in there we gotta get our hot sauce going it's so small all right definitely got to do a dab or two in there right I don't want to like accidentally use it all on here yeah definitely gotta get some of the sauce in there and another bite of that. I'd 100% do this again. And yeah. You could definitely thicken that. Thicken your sauce up. I mean it's creamy. It didn't say it was going to be super thick. But. Mm. I also didn't watch the TikTok about it. So. I had to know. Oh, yeah. 
Man. Floor fish. Got it though. Little drips of the sauce. Yeah, that's good stuff. I don't know about y'all, but I like me some canned fish. Definitely like me some canned fish. A little bottle of Tabasco is killer. And it's actually glass. That's cool. Well, what do you think? I guess if you hadn't seen this whole creamy thing before, toss some mayonnaise in it, man. I mean, I do think you have to definitely not use all your water if you're going to do this. Um, I don't know. Because I feel like I could have made it even thicker. Um, but you needed some of that hot water to kind of cook the egg per the recipe. I'm not going to let that go to waste though. I'm going to drink it. Drink the mayonnaise water. Drink the mayonnaise water. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll do that again. Overall, I'm satisfied with that dinner. Not too shabby, right? Oh, I gotta get all this junk. I'll get back to you. Well, I got all my junk cleaned up. And get underneath this sleeping bag and try to warm myself up a little bit. Because it's, although this feels nice, it's not exactly warm in here. Probably didn't charge this, so I bet it's almost dead. I didn't download anything new, so I don't really have a good place to set this. I guess I can put it all the way over yonder. It's not a big deal, right? Oh, oh man. I always could just go to bed. I'll probably fall asleep with a movie going. More than likely. What do I got on here? I got the Blues Brothers. I haven't watched that in a long time. I'll watch that. Alright. Well, cheers y'all. Get warm under here. <laughs> yeah, that feels a lot nicer. Good morning, y'all. Oh. I live a little dangerously, so I let that thing burn all night. I didn't die. Oh, man. What time it is? Uh. Seven forty three in the morning, and uh, my 
thing says it's 32.7 degrees outside and it's 41.2 degrees inside. Not too bad. Oh. oh man. Yeah, it's about the same temperatures as it was last night, so it's not like it created any more heat, but well I gotta I guess blow this thing out and let it cool off. Let the wax harden up. Imagine if I just blow it out and open that and kind of get my junk together or whatever. It'll, uh, it'll do that on its own pretty quickly. But we didn't, we didn't get any on the carpet so far. Fingers crossed. Great success. Uh, all right. Uh, I should probably put my regular pants back on and uh, we'll figure this out. blow it out without blowing the wax everywhere. I guess that's kind of stinky. So I don't know how well, how well, how well you'll be able to see that, but it definitely, you know, there's some soot in there. So I guess maybe that's a little plus of it is, you know, you connect, you're catching the soot off of the candle, but uh, I am impressed that the candle lasted that long uh, without burning down much farther than that. Like, I don't think it burned more than about an inch of the candle and it's been running for, God, hours, 12, you know, easy 12 hours, probably longer than 12 hours at this point, close to 12 hours, probably 12 hours. I didn't spill any on the, on the plate. Because unless I use this in this fashion again, my wife will probably use this outside. But, well, let's, let's uh, get the truck started. Uh, maybe, I guess, like I said, I got to wait for this to cool down. Let's let her open air, I guess. I take this back up front also just so it doesn't roll around or fall over and break. I don't need this broken all over my floor. Oh. Yeah, it's a little foggy out here this morning. Tree line's a whole lot less visible than yesterday. It really doesn't feel that bad. Like I don't even need this jacket on this morning. Get this stuff ready. I feel like I dropped my lighter out here somewhere last night. Don't really foresee getting that back. Ah, oh, there it is. Focus camera, what are you doing? There we go. Well, at least I found it. Well, 
was planning to drive over to where those towers are at. Yeah, I think they're weld, weld pumps or something like that. Uh, but with as foggy as it is, I don't believe you guys will be able to see that. I suppose we can take a take a cruise over there, but I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to be visible right now. things going the right way. It'll dry out. Don't need it right now anyway. Tell you what. Oh, what we need is this truck to get really warm really fast. Well, the, the thermometer back there must have been pretty decent. This one, my truck says it's 32 degrees, so. Let my 400 horses wake up this morning. You guys need some coffee? I do too. Whew. All right. Well, we can creep over to that other spot and see what, what's up with it. I can still see my camera a little bit. There were some parking bollards or I guess I don't know what you call them. Probably that. Let's go this way actually and uh, I was probably parked over the line a little bit well, I thought donuts we do some donuts quick but this thing's too cold I don't want to beat on her it's new I do tell you what the I think somebody asked in the last video's comments uh, how this truck compares to the old one in this weather. I don't think I mentioned it. Uh, the old truck had a limited slip diff in the rear end and this one has an electronic locking rear end. So there are some instances where I'm used to just having the old diff, the diff in the old truck would just lock up and spin both wheels. Yeah, you can't see over there. Um, but now it'll one wheel peel unless you engage the electronic rear locker like us really a selectable locker is better uh, but if you're not used to that or you don't know what you're doing it's you know it can be a bit of a pain but I'll keep a little momentum up this beast houses up here are pretty sweet I mean they're you know they ain't fancy houses but off to the left is the, the river bluff so they're up on top of this huge hill and here's another big hill see them fishtailing a little bit traction control is helping stop rattling so this is straight two-wheel drive it wasn't bad that wasn't bad at all I'd rather not go down that. Stop it! You're gonna drive me nuts. There we go. Alright, well, yeah, there's a huge, you know, you'd have this amazing view. Should see if maybe something like that's available for a rental at some point. Uh, but, anyways, y'all, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and close this one out here. I gotta go find myself some breakfast or some coffee at the very, very least. Um, enjoyed myself last night and the heater, I'm gonna say the heater is like plausible type of deal. Um, it didn't create a ton of heat in there, but you could tell that it was working. It works like a radiator. Uh, so yeah, I think you could probably decrease the gap at the bottom so you have uh, more volume of hot air inside of it. I believe if you've had four candles going, you've got four to fl four flames, so you're creating four times the BTUs and all that. Ooh, that looks like a rough railroad crossing. And uh, you could 
potentially try to find thicker flower pots or you know do some other stuff I got interested last night I was texting the homie Greg about it and then I started looking them up on Google and like there's people selling them on Etsy and you know there's like custom made ones for like two hundred dollars or something um, so I could I, I wouldn't say you you definitely couldn't rely on that to heat like an entire room of your house not in that scale um, but in my little space, like it definitely helped take the edge off. And of course I don't have my curtains up, so that makes a huge difference. We definitely need to get those taken care of. Uh, but I think it's a plausible idea. I'd, I would definitely try it again. I would like to honestly kind of rethink it and try it over again, see if I can, uh, see if I can make it work a little bit better. From this video, we, at a minimum, we have temperature differentials uh, for what like the interior and exterior temps were and what the temps were on the flower pot So if I do change it up or add more candles or whatever We should probably be able to kind of see that difference also But anyways y'all Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit I don't know where I am